Welcome to Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Atherton High School correspondent Adeline Ward. This July, we are taking a look back at some of our favorite stories from this past school year. Let's start by revisiting the first day of school. We're at Olmstead Academy North, first all-boys school, JCPS. I am excited. I am so glad to have them back. We're just going to have a great year. Come on, girls. That's what we're here for. This is my first day of school. First day of sixth grade. Fun, gym, eat. That's it. Do it all the next day. Well, excited. It's first day of school, my 26th here in JCPS, 26th opening day, so each one's exciting. Glad to see kids back in school. Today is the first day of school. We're in the main lobby of the new Indian Trail. We're waiting and receiving students, and buses are going to be over here in the gymnasium, and we're buzzing. Energy feeds off for energy, so my staff is excited, students are excited. I'm sure they're a little nervous, brand new building. Everybody's first day, everybody's first day, so we are very excited. I am a second grade teacher this year. We looped last year, so I'm gonna have some of my same students this year, and I'm really excited about that because I already have relationships built with them. Everything's new, everything is kind of modern. We were able to kind of create our space more how we wanted. It's more flexible. Right over here by Kennedy. When they come in this morning, they're gonna start drawing and writing about their summers, so they'll be ready to get started. It's sort of a whirlwind for me, especially because last year was my first year teaching. How are you? I'm gonna be in first, she's gonna be in kindergarten. Oh, how excited are you? Very excited. I just had to brush my teeth, wash up, um, put my school clothes on and also pack my backpack. I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. We are at Atherton High School and it is the first day of school. We hope to have what we call the next normal uh, for a school year. We hope to get our students back to learning, get back to our IB philosophy. Go all the way down to your bottom icon. We figured just first day we're going to jump right in. This is a hands-on program, so. Since everybody's already taken this sort of class before, we all know the drill with getting cameras and checking them out. Getting back to some normal times, you know, where we're in school every single day. I was just happy to see smiles and kids in classes. Welcome. The smile on your face there. The STEAM Vision Summer Camp gave students with visual impairments a wide range of experiences from cooking to creating music. Hi, buddy. Hey, hi, Ethan. Aww, you're sweet. That's nice, Alex. We're at Churchill Park School, and this is the camp for students with visual impairments. So we call it the 2022 Steam Sational Vision Summer Camp. Um, it's for students with visual impairments from upcoming first grade to fifth grade. This is Pick Boy from Charles Webb. Yeah, very good. Today we are doing um, a boom whackers lesson. It's a really cool instrument um, and we're going to be playing Old MacDonald. Yay, Sammy, good job! So we're going to make a treat that looks like haystacks, but you can eat it. I do some cooking. It's very difficult because she's in a wheelchair and she's nonverbal. So it's just really hard to find some teachers and um, a program that I can trust that she's in good hands. So JCPS has just been wonderful in doing that, and I know that she's in great hands when I send her here. We also have Farmer Steve coming, which we're so fortunate. Allegiant staffing paid for it this year, and that's awesome. What's he feel like? He's fluffy. He's fluffy? I have a farm. Oh, Jay Long. So. so she can feel the pictures in order to know where the lines are to stay in the lines. Coloring is your favorite thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. The kids get an amazing experience that they don't always get during the school year. So um, they get social interaction with peers, other peers that have visual impairments, for one. That's probably the biggest one because during the school year, most of these children are in school. Some of them may be the only student with visual impairment in their school. They love it. The kids absolutely love it. We get smiles and, and joyous faces. There you go. We have had a great time and they have learned a lot. I just have a great feeling when I leave here every day.
JCPS plans to install audio enhancement systems in every classroom by the end of the school year, providing a great communication tool for teachers and students. So I want you to think and then tell your partner or your team what's something you noticed on your photograph. I've been using the new speaker system ever since it was brought to Bowen Elementary. Since we first got them about two years ago, I find it extremely helpful. Yes, Neam. As a classroom teacher, I am able to fully hear my students. Oh, I love that! Especially with the mask because it bars lip reading and the projection of the voice, so the speaker system is a great, great tool. It helps make her voice louder so we can hear her better. What gives you that thought? You know, we have some hearing impaired students in the past, and so we've had teachers that have used an audio enhancement system that followed that student. We saw the benefits for all the students in the classroom, and so teachers started asking, can we get something that, that is like that? Whenever you start school, you get really shy, and your voice is kind of really low. And when we didn't have that sound system, I couldn't really hear my other classmates. It really helps because I can hear my other classmates with their work and it kind of inspires me. So before having it, I would have to pro project my voice um, a lot. Sometimes so much so that when I would go home in the evenings, it would be hoarse, raspy, um, and I would really have to limit my talking until the next day so I could refuel up with my voice. I have no issues with that now after using the system. It looks like she's doing backflip kind of. Okay. So when I'm able to hear my students, the other students can also hear them, and it just validates their thinking a little bit more. JCPS and T-Mobile have formed an innovative technology partnership. Let's see how it works at two of our schools. Our students, they use their Chromebooks in literacy, they use it in math. We integrate social studies and literacy, they use it in science. T-Mobile has worked very closely with uh, JCPS to provide embedded devices with connectivity for students uh, across the district. At the start of the pandemic, uh, Dr. Belcher and I just happened upon one another and we started talking and brainstorming um, in a very innovative, visionary way. We really burnt this idea of, you know, having students connected with devices that are always connected. We're excited to be able to provide not just devices, but anytime, anywhere internet access for our students. And so we're able to do that by partnering with uh, T-Mobile. And now we have equitable access for all of our kids. Uh, so not just kids at certain schools or certain locations. So it's all kids in JCPS. It's basically a laptop, but for kids to work on for school. Every child, every single one of our 460 plus students has a device that has its own internet that they can use at any given time. You know, every single aspect you use technology in your daily life. And so you can see we're here at elementary school. Our kids are doing this in kindergarten all the way up to uh, 12th grade. So we couldn't be more pleased on what our, our, our kids are doing and our staff and our teachers and our administrators on the support we've had for this. Kids who don't have internet access at home, they get one of our LTE enabled uh, computers from T-Mobile. By shrinking that digital divide, providing internet access at home, providing a computer at home, kids can research things, they can look at things, they're still learning how to work with computers. I really like it because you can do work on it and uh, it's gonna uh, help me a lot because if I'm probably become an engineer or somebody that creates video games or codes, then I would probably need to learn how to work a device. By giving that computer in their hand, even if they're just getting on YouTube and watching silly videos, they're still learning how it works, how to get online to things. That is still shrinking that digital divide. So if there is a device that goes home with a student, there's not a concern of if there is a public Wi-Fi somewhere or if, if their parents have you know, home internet access. They know that when they step outside of the classroom, they're still gonna be connected 24 seven. It has just really opened up a world for them. It gives them the ability to independently look into things and to connect um, to class. You can do it anywhere. They can use it on the bus. They can use it at home. They can use it in Granny's house. They can use it anywhere. They can use a cell phone. I think it's pretty cool. We've done a lot of amazing partnerships, and I can tell you, JCPS by far is one of the partnerships that has been the most innovative and the most uh, fulfilling. 
Um, the relationships that we've been able to build with the district leadership has been second to none. Fourth grade students at the Johnson Town Road Elementary School were featured in the New York Times. My name is Cash and I feel like parents should appreciate kids' ideas. I'm McKinley and I vote high schoolers and middle schools deserve a playground too in our city. I'm Emma and I vote when you get a pet, make sure you know how to take care of it. We're at Dr. Town Road Elementary, and the project we worked on is the New York Times. My students have had the fantastic opportunity to write their opinion pieces that have been published in the New York Times. Super proud of these published New York Times writers. Uh, they had a wonderful experience where they got to work with writers and editors. The New York Times was seeking out a fourth grade class to really just hear their raw opinions, teach them a little bit about editing, a little bit about opinion writing. We had everything from school lunches to uh, better serving the homeless to food insecurity to taking care of our earth. I wrote an opinion piece. Opinion, my opinion piece was that you should have, you should keep your friends. Because I have older cousins and family, they lost their childhood friends, and I got afraid of losing my best friends. I uh, wrote about uh, how homeless people should get more respect. So this was a two-day project with the New York Times. On the first day, a New York Times photographer came out to our school and took each student individually and did a headshot of them. I think that it was really important for them to realize the power that their words held. We had to be on Zoom calls and then we had to write about what we did and then we had to tell the editors and they helped us like fix sentences. When I actually got to hold the newspaper, it was like, I mean, I knew it was happening, but it finally became real. To actually see their faces, to see Johnsontown Road Elementary in print, I mean, it was just incredible to actually see their work. I'm proud of my classmates and myself, but still terrified. It makes me feel like happy and excited because it's like not a lot of people get to do this stuff. So I am extremely, extremely proud of my fourth grade students. We've got more of our favorite JCBS stories coming up. Stay tuned. Today is the walk around with the big checks and hand them out to, to seven students that are award winners. Ulysses, congratulations. You are a recipient of the Jefferson County Public Schools Employee Sponsored Student Scholarship Fund for a total of $10,500. You today get a scholarship for $7,000. Getting this award is going to help me focus on school more and help me listen to the burden of having to work while studying. What these kids have done and overcome and the challenges they've met and, and the things that they do, not only to help themselves and their family, but their school and their community, it's amazing. So we are excited to give you a scholarship for $10,500. How about that? Big check to you is worth $10,500 in cash to you. I'm going to the University of Louisville for bioengineering. Um, and with this check, um, this will financially be, this will make me more financially stable and allow me to pursue my dreams and passion of what I want to be. This check is made out to you, Raven, for $10,000. But here is your check for $10,000. $500. And I'm proud to give you a check for $10,500. Wow. This guy flies planes. It's really my favorite day of the year. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Atherton High School correspondent Adeline Ward. This month we are taking a look back at some of our most memorable stories from the 2022-2023 school year. U of L Health and Central High School announced an innovative program designed to get more students of color interested in medical careers. And today with this partnership, U of L, U of L School of Medicine, U of L Health, Central High School, JCPS, 
we are connected. We're gonna start with a couple dozen at first, then the number will grow to hundreds, and then eventually thousands of students will get to meet, work with, befriend, and know doctors, healthcare professionals, nurses. You will never have a student from Central that says, I've never seen a doctor that looks like me, and that is powerful. We're talking about breaking down the barriers for a career path in healthcare. Pre-Med has given us the opportunity to come into this hospital. We've got to see the best and the worst of it all. Something that most people don't get to see until like their fourth year of medical school. It's just an opportunity like getting to see people give birth naturally or a C-section. And it's something you just don't expect. And you fall in love with it and you want to help the community even more. And you want to work harder to become better for the people around us. I would probably hope that on top. <laughs> this is truly what I call authentic education. I always say that it's great what takes place within the four walls of the classroom, but it's so much better at what takes place beyond the four walls of the classroom. They're going to learn about heart disease from our world-renowned cardiothoracic surgeons. They're going to learn about healthcare disparities from our School of Public Health professionals who are fighting daily to limit these healthcare disparities. And with Dr. Miller's help, we start working together about how can we change the future of medicine starting in ninth grade. Ninth grade, guys, that is huge. So I can already tell that a pipeline like this is already working. We have seen a lot, we have experienced a lot. We have been able to actually be hands-on and we are working in the clinic right now. I have been able to be hands-on learning and getting to experience, getting to ask questions. They are going to make a difference in the world and it is because of Central High School and the University of Louisville and we can't thank you enough for this. I firmly believe that at the end, this program will be the prototype that other academic institutions across the country attempt to emulate. When we're done, this will be the most integrative and integrated pipeline program in the country. This is a really big deal for us and we will take this opportunity and we'll run with it. <laughs> Students at Olmsted Academy South worked with Jim James of My Morning Jacket and several other local musicians who taught them how to express themselves through writing and music. My teacher told me like that somebody named Jim James is like famous here, but I don't know which one it is. One of them was very famous. I didn't, I didn't get to work with them, but I would love to get to know him and stuff. We're at Olmsted Academy South. This is a songwriting program that we do. We have a community partner in Young Authors Greenhouse, and through that organization, they've arranged for our students to write songs. Should we continue with that tempo? from then on out. The students will work for about five weeks writing their thoughts and their words and their feelings and then a group of uh, seven to eight of us musicians will come in and work with the students and kind of just teach them about songwriting. Jim James serves on the board of Young Authors Greenhouse and from the beginning he's been interested in elevating what Young Authors Greenhouse does and what my kids are able to do with them. Well it's like wow like I just wrote that like it's interesting to see how a small idea in your mind can turn into something like actual music that you hear on the radio. It makes me feel like really um, noticed and special like I feel like our school is really cool you know because we get to work with all these super awesome people. It's been fun how to take a poem or your idea to make it a big music musical um, showcase. And I like the team I was with. It's so important and so magical to see these students watch as what they've written connects with us. I know like how much it would have meant to me as a young kid. We're just trying to get together and find as many creative ways as we can to show kids like, hey, if you've got creativity, there's a way to express it. Because I think that's really important to kind of, for kids to hear that from adults. And that's something that I never got. So I've really enjoyed working with Young Authors Greenhouse. Just doing an assignment for me or just having my feedback is not enough. So to have people from the community take time and come in, it elevates the authenticity of it. It's not just a backpack item. It's not just a class assignment. This is a real life concert that we're gonna do. Marion Seymour, eighth grader Josiah Johnson, inspires everyone with his dedication and drive in the game of basketball. 
I don't want people to feel bad for me. Marion Seymour School eighth grader Josiah Johnson was born without legs. Despite the missing limbs, he tried out and made the varsity boys basketball team at Moore Middle. He made this team. We didn't put him on a team because of no sympathy reason or anything like that. He actually showed up to every tryout. He gave his, his all. That's put himself on a team by making a spot. Johnson has always been an athlete. When he was younger, he did gymnastics. But basketball was the sport that would end up capturing his heart. When I was growing up, I hung out with a lot of older people. Some of them go to this school. They're like juniors and sophomores now. And they always used to go to the park, and I used to go with them and just play, you know. And then that's like having that environment and being able to be comfortable and have fun with people I know. It's just something I really like. This year, he took that love to represent more. In his first year on the team, he's already made a massive impact. A funny story, when we uh, made the list for tryouts and whatnot, uh, we forgot to put Josiah's name on there. And then, like, the other players and stuff like that, they were really mad at me and the other coach. We forgot three sixth graders and three seventh graders as well. But it wasn't nothing like that. He, they were just upset, but they really loved Josiah. And to his teammates, he's just one of them. Johnson is a basketball player, and he wants to make sure everyone knows that. When people, like, feel bad for me when I'm playing basketball, I like to show them that you don't got to feel bad for me, that I want to play on an equal level with you, and that I don't want you to, you know, feel bad for me because I have no legs. He helps the eighth graders practice harder, play harder, because they know that he'll come in and take their minutes if they don't play, play hard or practice hard. This season, he's already gotten some playing time appearing in one game so far. Although he missed his first chance to put up points, he's confident he'll score his first points very soon. JCPS received what is believed to be the largest gift ever. Novelist, philanthropist, and billionaire Mackenzie Scott has donated $20 million to the district. We are announcing today that Ms. Mackenzie Scott has provided the Jefferson County Public Education Foundation a one-time gift of $20 million. So this is, this is a real game changer for the Choice Zone and the families in this community. So I want us to be comparable to every other school in Jefferson County. What we want to do is take our school that has the highest amount of PTA support, booster club support, alumni, um, activities accounts, all of these things, and tell Shawnee you get the, the same amount or more per student as our highest funded school. When I go in the locker room, I'm a little embarrassed. When we go to other places, they have really nice facilities. There's no reason that we can't have that here at Shawnee. Well, some schools in Jefferson County, you know, have college looking football fields. We just don't. We have a basketball floor that as far as I can find out has never been replaced. You want to reflect in our Dia de los Muertos ofrenda. Is I want to bring the full richness of education right here to my students that are sitting in my classroom. And that's what I'm going to plan on doing with any money that I get. So I'm super excited. I can't tell you how excited I am. As we talk about working on uh, inequities foundation-wise, and I just heard uh, Principal Rice talk about the concession stands and some other things that we're going to do, that will attract our more students, more families, and more community. We promised this community that we would fund the schools appropriately and equitable to make sure that these were great opportunities uh, for our students here at the Academy at Shawnee and our other 12 Choice Zone schools. This $20 million will fund this initiative, we believe, for up to 10 years, but we want to keep this going for many years after that. And I'm just so excited to see what a school like the Academy at Shawnee is able to do with this. So thank you, Ms. McKenzie Scott. I can't say enough. Um, it's probably the best phone call I've ever gotten. I almost fell out of my seat. Uh, because I know the impact this is going to have on kids in this community. Iroquois High School offers its students a chance to help find their community while exploring the world of magic in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> in the back corner of a classroom at Iroquois High School, these students are taken to a different world. Eva had successfully set and sprung her trap upon the giant boar thingy. It is now tied up upside down and very, very angry. Oh. With every roll of a die, it, the boar rolls a natural one, a community is formed. It's always been a fun thing for me, a nice outlet for imagination. The Dungeons and Dragons Club, or D&D, &D, has long been a place where students can explore a world of witchcraft, warlocks, and magic. I've played Dungeons and Dragons myself since I was 12 years old. 
Um, so I was like, hey, that's a really cool thing. And I know it's, it was a really positive experience for me uh, at high school age. I just wanted to be a part of that, whether I could kind of jump in and play and kind of help students that were kind of new to it get the hang of playing uh, or even run myself. Sophomore Donovan Mortson is the dungeon master, the game's narrator. I've uh, been playing D&D &D for a long time with my family and family friends. D&D &D is a story-driven game, so no one person or team can declare themselves the victor. While it is a game with no wins or losses, the club provides a place where everyone can feel like a winner. It's relaxing, it's nice, it's a good release from the stress of high school. I believe that community is a very important thing for mental health. It's good to make friends, it's good to express yourself. Before I joined D&D Club, I was having trouble being social. But it teaches a lot of social skills. Favorite part about running this club, uh, honestly, is just to keep the love of this game going because it is honestly such a, a fun game and brings people together. You may have bested me for this day, but this has not been the last you shall hear of the wrath of Talos. Paper tutoring is a program that helps teachers and students get ahead and stay on top of their schoolwork in class and pretty much anywhere. After you've got the structure piece addressed, look at what your paper tutor said and apply their feedback. If it wasn't for paper, I would probably just be confused all the time, well, most of the time. I use paper to help me identify my errors and what I need to add. Also to help me understand what I'm supposed to do throughout the assignment. You should have feedback from me and or the paper tutor. Paper is an app. So we have students who sometimes can't get here at 7.30 in the morning, they miss a lesson, but we load everything onto Google Classroom so that when they go home, if they have missed our class for some reason, if a student didn't understand the assignment just by reading it, they can jump online and chat with a person. That person can help them through and get them started. They can help you with just about anything, so like no matter what, if, if your teachers are doing something else, then you can just get on paper and then you can get everything you need there. I like that all of the libraries are really nice and they go at the pace that you are in so you don't get confused or left behind. Let's just peek at that so that we can see. There are 25 of them and one of me. And sometimes they're ready for additional feedback before I can get to them. So see if you can't find the line. So they have no reason to stall. They can move forward because there is someone within 90 seconds of when they log on who they can bounce ideas off of right away. So I think the more feedback they can get, the better. I don't have to stress about it, and it's really easy to get access to. The paper tutors, they always give like really good feedback when you need it, and I can just keep on submitting it to paper, getting it back, and then revising until it's perfect. Thanks for watching our show. You can find entire episodes on our JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids. Thank you.